Book six, canto eleven of the Fairy Queen by Edmund Spencer. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Thomas Copeland. Canto eleven. The thieves fall out for Pastorel whilst Melaby is slain. Her Calidore from them redeems and bringeth back again. The joys of love, if they should ever last without affliction or disquietness, that worldly chances do amongst them cast, would be on earth too great a blessedness, liker to heaven than mortal wretchedness. Therefore the winged God, to let men weet that here on earth is no sure happiness, a thousand sours hath tempered with one sweet, to make it seem more dear and dainty as is meat. Like as is now befallen to this fair maid, fair pastorel, of whom is now my song, who being now in dreadful darkness laid amongst those thieves which her in bondage strong detained, yet fortune, not with all this wrong contented, greater mischief on her threw, and sorrows heaped on her in greater throng. But whoso hears her heaviness would rue and pity her sad plight so changed from pleasant hue. Whilst thus she in these hellish dens remained, rapid in wretched cares and heart's unrest, it so befell, as fortune had ordained, that he which was their capitan professed, and had the chief command of all the rest, one day, as he did all his prisoners view, with lustful eyes beheld that lovely guest, fair Pastorella, whose sad mournful hue like the fair morning clad in misty fog did shew. At sight whereof his barbarous heart was fired, and inly burnt with flames most raging hot, that her alone he for his part desired of all the other prey which they had got, and her in mind did to himself a lot. From that day forth he kindness to her showed, and sought her love by all the means he mought. With looks, with words, with gifts he oft her woed, and mixed threats among, and much unto her vowed. But all that ever he could do or say, her constant mind could not a whit remove, nor draw unto the lure of his lewd lay, to grant him favor or afford him love. Yet ceased he not to sue, and always prove by which he mote accomplish his request, saying and doing all that mote behoove. Ne day nor night he suffered her to rest, but her all night did watch, and all the day molest. At last, when him she so importune saw, fearing lest he at length the reins should lend unto his lust, and make his will his law, sith in his power she was to foe or friend, she thought it best, for shadow, to pretend some show of favor, by him gracing small that she thereby mote either freely wend, or at more ease continue there his thrall. A little well is lent that gaineth more withal. So from thenceforth, when love he to her made, with better terms she did him entertain, which gave him hope, and did him half persuade that he in time her joyance should obtain. But when she saw, through that small favor's gain, that further than she willing was he pressed, she found no means to bar him, but to feign a sudden sickness, which her sore oppressed, and made unfit to serve his lawless mind's behest. By means whereof she would not him permit once to approach to her in privity, but only amongst the rest by her to sit, mourning the rigor of her malady, and seeking all things meet for remedy. But she resolved no remedy to find, nor better cheer to show in misery, till fortune would her captive bonds unbind. Her sickness was not of the body, but the mind. During which space that she thus sick did lie, it chanced a sort of merchants which were wont to skim those coasts for bondmen there to buy, and by such traffic after gains to hunt, arrived in this isle, though bare and blunt, to inquire for slaves, where being ready met by some of these same thieves at the instant brunt, were brought unto their captain, who was set by his fair patient side with sorrowful regret to whom they showed how those merchants were arrived in place their bond-slaves for to buy, and therefore prayed that those same captives there mote to them for their most commodity be sold, and amongst them share it equally. This their request the captain much appalled, 
yet could he not their just demand deny and willed straight the slaves should be forth called and sold for most advantage not to be forestalled then forth the good old melaby was brought and coradon with many other mo whom they before in divers spoils had caught all which he to the merchant's sale did show till some which did the sundry prisoners know gan to inquire for that fair shepherdess which with the rest they took not long ago and gan her form and features to express the more to augment her price through praise of comeliness to whom the captain in full angry wise made answer that the maid of whom they spake was his own purchase and his only prize with which none had to do ne aught partake but he himself which did that conquest make little for him to have one silly lass besides through sickness now so wan and weak that nothing meet in merchandise to pass so showed them her to prove how pale and weak she was the sight of whom though now decayed and marred and eke but hardly seen by candlelight yet like a diamond of rich regard in doubtful shadow of the darksome night with starry beams about her shining bright these merchants fixed eyes did so amaze that what through wonder and what through delight a while on her they greedily did gaze and did her greatly like and did her greatly praise at last when all the rest them offered were and prizes to them placed at their pleasure they all refused in regard of her nay aught would buy however prized with measure without in her whose worth above all treasure they did esteem and offered store of gold but then the captain fraught with more displeasure bade them be still his love should not be sold the rest take if they would he her to him would hold therewith some other of the chiefest thieves boldly him bade such injury forbear for that same maid however it him grieves should with the rest be sold before him there to make the prizes of the rest more dear that with great rage he stoutly doth deny and fiercely drawing forth his blade doth swear that who so hardy hand on her doth lay it dearly shall abide and death for hansel pay thus as they words amongst them multiply they fall to strokes the fruit of too much talk and the mad steel about doth fiercely fly not sparing white nor leaving any balk but making way for death at large to walk who in the horror of the grisly night in thousand dreadful shapes doth amongst them stalk and makes huge havoc whilst the candlelight outquenched leaves no skill nor difference of white like as a sort of hungry dogs he met about some carcass by the common way do fall together striving each to get the greatest portion of the greedy prey all on confused heaps themselves assay and snatch and bite and rend and tug and tear that who them sees would wonder at their fray and who sees not would be afraid to hear such was the conflict of those cruel brigands there but first of all their captives they do kill lest they should join against the weaker side or rise against the remnant at their will old melaby is slain and him beside his aged wife with many others wide but coradon escaping craftily creeps forth of doors whilst darkness him doth hide and flies away as fast as he can hie ne stayeth leave to take before his friends do die but pastorella woeful wretched elf was by the captain all this while defended who minding more her safety than himself his target always over her pretended by means whereof that mote not be amended he at the length was slain and laid on ground yet holding fast twixt both his arms extended fair pastorel who with the self-same wound launched through the arm fell down with him in dreary swound there lay she covered with confused press of carcasses which dying on her fell though when as he was dead the fray gan cease and each to other calling did compel to stay their cruel hands from slaughter fell sith they that were the cause of all were gone thereto they all at once agreed well and lighting candles new gan search anon how many of their friends were slain how many foan their captain there they cruelly found killed and in his arms the dreary dying maid like a sweet angel twixt two clouds uphilled 
her lovely light was dimmed and decayed with cloud of death upon her eyes displayed yet did the cloud make even that dimmed light seem much more lovely in that darkness laid and twixt the twinkling of her eyelids bright to spark out little beams like stars in foggy night but when they moved the carcasses aside they found that life did yet in her remain then all their helps they busily applied to call the soul back to her home again and wrought so well with labor and long pain that they to life recovered her at last who sighing sore as if her heart in twain had riven been and all her heart-strings brassed with dreary drooping eyne looked up like one aghast there she beheld that saw her grieved to see her father and her friends about her lying herself soul left a second spoil to be of those that having saved her from dying renewed her death by timely death denying what now is left her but to wail and weep wringing her hands and ruefully loud crying ne carried she her wound in tears to steep all be with all their might those brigands did her keep but when they saw her now relived again they left her so in charge of one the best of many worst who with unkind disdain and cruel rigor her did much molest scarce yielding her due food or timely rest and scarcely suffering her infested wound that sore her pained by any to be dressed so leave we her in wretched thraldom bound and turn we back to calidore where we am found who when he back returned from the wood and saw his shepherd's cottage spoiled quite and his love reft away he wexed wood and half enraged at that rueful sight that even his heart for very fell despite and his own flesh he ready was to tear he chafed he grieved he fretted and he sight and fared like a furious wild bear whose whelps are stolen away she being otherwhere ne white he found to whom he might complain white he found of whom he might inquire that more increased the anguish of his pain he sought the woods but no man could see there he sought the plains but could no tidings hear the woods did not but echoes vain rebound the plains all waste and empty did appear where went the shepherds oft their pipes resound and feed in hundred flocks there now not one he found at last as there he roamed up and down he chanced one coming towards him to spy that seemed to be some sorry simple clown with ragged weeds and locks up staring high as if he did from some late danger fly and yet his fear did follow him behind who as he unto him approached nigh he mote perceive by signs which he did find that coradin it was the silly shepherd's hind though to him running fast he did not stay to greet him first but asked where were the rest where pastoral who full of fresh dismay and gushing forth in tears was so oppressed that he no word could speak but smit his breast and up to heaven his eyes fast streaming through whereat the knight amazed yet did not rest but asked again what meant that rueful hue where was his pastoral where all the other crew ah well away said he then sighing sore that ever i did live this day to see this dismal day and was not dead before before i saw fair pastorella die die out alas then calidore did cry how could the death dare ever her to quell but read thou shepherd read what destiny or other direful hap from heaven or hell hath wrought this wicked deed do fear away and tell though when the shepherd breathed had a while he thus began where shall i then commence this woeful tale or how those brigands vile with cruel rage and dreadful violence spoiled all our cots and carried us from hence or how fair pastorel should have been sold to merchants but was saved with strong defence or how those thieves whilst one sought her to hold fell all at odds and fought through fury fierce and bold in that same conflict woe is me befell this fatal chance this doleful accident whose heavy tidings now i have to tell first all the captives which they here had hent were by them slain by general consent 
old Melaby and his good wife withal these eyes saw die and dearly did lament but when the lot to pastorel did fall their captain long withstood and did her death forestall but what could he gainst all them do alone it could not boot needs mote she die at last i only scaped through great confusion of cries and clamours which amongst them passed in dreadful darkness dreadfully aghast that better were with them to have been dead than here to see all desolate and waste despoiled of those joys and jolly head which with those gentle shepherds here i want to lead when calidore these rueful news had wrought his heart quite deaded was with anguish great and all his wits with dool were nigh distraught that he his face his head his breast did beat and death itself unto himself did threat oft cursing the heavens that so cruel were to her whose name he often did repeat and wishing oft that he were present there when she was slain or had been to her succor near but after grief a while had had his course and spent itself in mourning he at last began to mitigate his swelling source and in his mind with better reason cast how he might save her life if life did last or if that dead how he her death might wreak sith otherwise he could not mend thing past or if it to revenge he were too weak then for to die with her and his lives threed to break though coradin he prayed sith he well knew the ready way unto that thievish one to wend with him and be his conduct true unto the place to see what should be done but he whose heart through fear was late fordone would not for aught be drawn to former dread but by all means the danger known did shun yet calidore so well him wrought with mead and fair bespoke with words that he at last agreed so forth they go together god before both clad in shepherds weeds agreeably and both with shepherds hooks but calidore had underneath him armed privily though to the place when they approached nigh they chanced upon an hill not far away some flocks of sheep and shepherds to espy to whom they both agreed to take their way in hope their news to learn how they mote best assay there did they find that which they did not fear the selfsame flocks the which those thieves had reft from melaby and from themselves while e'er and certain of the thieves there by them left the which for want of herds themselves then kept right well knew coradin his own late sheep and seeing them for tender pity wept but when he saw the thieves which did them keep his heart gan fail albeit he saw them all asleep but calidore recomforting his grief though not his fear for not may fear dissuade him hardly forward drew whereas the thief lay sleeping soundly in the bushes shade whom coradin him counselled to invade now all unwares and take the spoil away but he that in his mind had closely made a further purpose would not so them slay but gently waking them gave them the time of day though sitting down by them upon the green of sundry things he purpose gan to feign that he by them might certain tidings ween of pastorel were she alive or slain mongst which the thieves them questioned again what mr men and eke from whence they were to whom they answered as did appertain that they were poor herd grooms the which while e'er had from their maesters fled and now sought hire elsewhere whereof right glad they seemed and offer made to hire them well if they their flocks would keep for they themselves were evil grooms they said unwont with herds to watch or pasture sheep but to foray the land or scour the deep thereto they soon agreed and earnest took to keep their flocks for little hire and cheap for they for better hire did shortly look so there all day they bode till light the sky forsook though when as towards darksome night it drew unto their hellish dens those thieves them brought where shortly they in great acquaintance grew and all the secrets of their entrails sought there did they find contrary to their thought that pastorel yet lived but all the rest were dead right so as coradin had taught 
whereof they both full glad and blithe did rest, but chiefly Calidore, whom grief had most possessed. At length, when they occasion fittest found, in dead of night, when all the thieves did rest, after a late foray, and slept full sound, Sir Calidore him armed, as he thought best, having of late, by diligent in quest, provided him a sword of meanest sort, with which he straight went to the captain's nest, but Coridan durst not with him consort, ne durst abide behind for dread of worse effort. When to the cave they came, they found it fast, but Calidore with huge resistless might the doors assailed and the locks upbrast, with noise whereof the thief awaking light unto the entrance ran, where the bold knight encountering him with small resistance slew. The whiles fair Pastorel through greater fright was almost dead, misdoubting lest of new some uproar were, like that which lately she did view. But when as Calidore was comin in, and gan aloud for Pastorel to call, knowing his voice, although not heard long sin, she sudden was revived therewithal, and wondrous joy felt in her spirit's thrall, like him that, being long in tempest tossed, looking each hour into death's mouth to fall, at length espies at hand the happy coast, on which he safety hopes, that erst feared to be lost. Her gentle heart, that now long season past, had never joyance felt, nor cheerful thought, began some smack of comfort new to taste, like lifeful heat to numbed senses brought, and life to feel that long for death it sought. Ne less in heart rejoiced Calidore when he her found, but like to one distraught and robbed of reason, towards her him bore a thousand times embraced and kissed a thousand more. But now by this, with noise of late uproar, the hue and cry was raised all about, and all the brigands, flocking in great store unto the cave gan press, not having doubt of that was done, and entered in a rout. But Calidore in thentry close did stand, and entertaining them with courage stout, still slew the foremost that came first to hand, so long till all the entry was with bodies manned. Though when no more could nigh to him approach, he breathed his sword, and rested him till day, which when he spied upon the earth to encroach, through the dead carcasses he made his way, amongst which he found a sword of better say, with which he forth went into the open light, where all the rest for him did ready stay, and fierce assailing him with all their might gan all upon him lay. There gan a dreadful fight. How many flies in hottest summer day do seize upon some beast whose flesh is bare, that all the place with swarms do overlay, and with their little stings right felly fair so many thieves about him swarming are, all which do him assail on every side, and sore oppress, ne any him doth spare, but he doth with his raging bronze divide their thickest troops, and round about him scattereth wide. Like as a lion mongst an herd of deer disperseth them to catch his choicest prey, so did he fly amongst them here and there, and all that near him came did hew and slay, till he had strode with bodies all the way that none his danger daring to abide, fled from his wrath, and did themselves convey into their caves their heads from death to hide, ne any left that victory to him envied. Then back returning to his dearest dear, he her gan to recomfort all he might, with gladful speeches and with lovely cheer, and forth her bringing to the joyous light, whereof she long had lacked the wishful sight, devised all goodly means from her to drive the sad resemblance of her wretched plight. So her uneath at last he did revive that long had lion dead, and made again alive. This done, into those thievish dens he went, and thence did all the spoils and treasures take, which they from many long had robbed and rent. But fortune now the victor's meed did make, of which the best he did his love betake, and also all those flocks which they before had reft from Melaby and from his make, he did them all to Coridan restore, so drove them all away, and his love with him bore. End of Canto 11 Recording by Thomas Copeland